Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're making a decaying effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so here's a little demo of what we'll be creating today. We've got a pretty simple scene here. There's just one big sphere and a little controller. And if we hit play and move this controller towards our sphere, whichever point it touches, it's going to start decaying our object. It kind of looks like the effect in the Venom film. You can see we've got some nice distortion in there as well. And we can even move this to another position and we'll rewind. And now our decay is starting from that point instead. So I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with this. There's loads of things you could do with this technique. So without much further ado, let's see how it's done. So you can probably guess how we're gonna start this. Let's come up here and grab a sphere. Then we'll come over here to display and turn our lines on. We're gonna start by working on our Venom style deformations. So we want nice even topology on our sphere, which the standard sphere doesn't really give us. So let's come down here and change the type from standard to hexahedron. Now those polygons are nice and even. That should be perfect for adding a bit of deformation. While we're here, let's also subdivide this a bit. We'll bring those segments up to something like 90. Okay, I think we're ready to deform this mesh now. So let's come up to our deformers and we'll bring in a displacer deformer. If you hold shift when you click it, it should automatically apply itself as a child of our sphere. At first, it looks like not much has happened. So let's take a look at these settings down here. Let's go to the shading tab. And now we can use a shader to drive this displacement. So we'll click on this little arrow here and we'll grab a noise shader. And you can see that noise is already affecting our mesh. Let's go and have a look at some of the settings it has. If we click on here, we could start by changing the noise type down here. There's plenty to choose from, but the one that I like, which gives you a cool organic look, is the Zada or Zeta noise type. So we'll grab that. And it's looking a bit spiky rather than organic at the moment, but we can fix that. Let's come down here and bring up that global scale. And that should hopefully smooth things out a bit. That's better. Now, while we're here, we wanna animate this noise. So we'll just turn our animation speed up just a tad, something like 0.4. And now if we give that a play, we've now got some animated displacement. And that's looking pretty cool. Let's pause that for now. We could probably make this displacement a little bit more intense. So let's go back to our displacer and under the object tab, we'll just double that height. And if we give that a play, it's looking nice and organic. So now that we've got our decayed look nailed down, let's figure out a way we can transition this effect onto our sphere. But before we do, let's come up to our sphere we wanna lock in the geometry for this object. So we need to convert it from a sphere to a single mesh. So we'll right click and choose make editable. And that's going to allow us to access the points. So we'll switch into point mode and you can see all of those there. It's hiding the effect of the displacer while we have a look at these points, but we'll be able to see that again shortly. So while we're in points mode, we'll hit control A on the keyboard to select all of the points. And then we wanna bring in a vertex map. So we'll come up to select and all the way down the bottom to set vertex weight. We want our weight value to be zero and we'll hit okay. Now our whole sphere and all those points have gone red. And if we switch back to object mode, we'll get our displacer back again. So aside from it turning red, nothing's really happened, but we now have a vertex map up here. And vertex maps in the latest version of Cinema 4D, version 20, have a nifty little feature where you can use the new field system with them. So we're gonna turn on this box and do exactly that. And you can see straight off the bat, we've got a freeze in here now. 
And that's just going to freeze all the data in our vertex map, which is what we want. But we also want a fall off in here so we can control the area that's going to be affected. So we'll come down here and bring in a spherical field. And this will more or less be our controller. So let's just scale this down a bit and reposition it where we want the effect to take place. Somewhere on the surface of our sphere. And now we need to tell our displacer to be affected by our vertex map and therefore the spherical field. So we'll grab our displacer and then down here under the fall off tab, we can just drag our vertex map straight in here. And it all goes back to the original sphere shape now. And if we grab our spherical field, it doesn't look like it's touching the surface yet, but if we move it out here, you can see that's isolating the effect within the spherical field. Let's grab the scale tool and scale this up a bit so you can see this easier. You'll see everywhere the spherical field touches is receiving that displacement. So you could just animate the spherical field, but let's undo that. I'm gonna show you another little trick. Let's grab our vertex map. What we wanna do is have our spherical field touch anywhere on this object and create an organic growing effect that slowly engulfs the entire sphere. And to do that, we're going to check out some of the features of our freeze object down here. Let's move this up so we can see it a bit better. And the key to making this grow is pretty easy. We just need to change the mode to grow. And now if we hit play, it's growing out from the position of our spherical field. Although the growth is happening pretty fast, but we can slow that down by bringing the effect strength down a little bit. Let's try 80% and give that a go. And that's looking pretty good for speed, but the effect transition itself is looking a bit too linear for me. Let's see if we can break it up a little bit and make it look a bit more organic. So we're going to do something pretty similar to what we did back in the displacer. We're going to bring in some noise again. And to do that, we'll come back over here and add another field. This time we'll bring in a shader field. And you can see that guy up here. So just like we did back in the displacer, we'll click on this arrow and we can choose our noise. And you can see how that's affecting our vertex map now. So let's click into that noise. We'll tweak this a little bit. Let's adjust the scale first. Let's bring that up to something like 465. And then we'll come down and tweak this. So we've got a bit more contrast between the yellow and red parts of our vertex map. Then we'll come up here and hit this arrow so we can go back a level. And you can see that noise has been applied to our entire object. I just wanna change the mode so it affects just the edges of our mask. So we'll switch this over to overlay and we'll give that a play. And hopefully you can see how that's broken up the edges of that transition now. Let's just stop it on a frame in the middle of the transition. Maybe there, you can see the edge here is broken up a bit more. We can do it before and after if we turn this on and off. And we could even make this a bit more extreme. We could even bring in another shader field and add in another noise over this one. Let's change the blending mode to overlay on that guy as well. And we'll click into our shader and you could bring in another noise, but you're not limited to that. We might actually use a surface shader this time. Let's try a tile shader. And we'll click up here to go into the options for that. We can even change the pattern of our tiles here. Let's try the waves number one. By default, the tile shader has all these colors in here, but it's the black and white values that will affect our transition. So we might as well change these to black and white. And you can see how that's breaking up that edge a little bit more. So feel free to play around with the different shaders to get a look that you're happy with. We'll give this one a play. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. It almost looks like little tendrils wrapping around the surface there. So the next thing we need to do now that we've got our transition on is figure out a way to transition off and back to our sphere shape. So let's come over here and go back a level. And this time we're going to add a linear field. This guy is going to fade our effect from on to off between these two planes. If we grab the move tool and drag this through our sphere, you might see a little bit of that happening. We'll need to make a few more tweaks, but first let's just get this animated. I want it to start over here and animate this direction. So we're currently at frame 57, which I think is fine to start this animation. Let's make sure we've got our linear field selected and we'll go to the coordinates tab. We'll set a keyframe in the X direction, which I think is the right one. Then we'll scooch forward on the timeline to frame 75 and we'll move this guy through our sphere and set another keyframe in the X axis. 
then we can rewind and give it a play. Oops, and we've already got an issue here. We don't want our sphere to start with the deformation, so we'll have to fix our blending mode. So back in our vertex map, we'll find our linear field, and we want to use this to subtract the deformation that we have below it. So if we set this to subtract and hit play, this is still not quite right. It's actually affecting it 100% now. So we're not getting our original growth animation. And this is basically because our fall off is pointed in the wrong direction. So all we need to do is reverse it. And we can do that nice and easy under the remapping tab. Here's a visual representation of what our fall off is doing. And all we need to do is invert that by hitting this button right here. And now you can see our original deformation is back. So if we rewind and hit play, this should work how we want it to. So our decay animation happens and it's wiped off. Let's watch it one more time. Perfect. But there's still one more thing we can do to make it look a little bit more organic. The transition still looks a little bit linear. So let's see if we can add some bounciness to it. Let's go back to the displacer and down here with our vertex map, we'll click here and bring in a delay. And if you've ever used the delay effector in the standard MoGraph, you've probably had a bit of experience with this. We've got a few different modes here. We'll leave it on smooth and I'll show you that effect. Let's hit play. And as you'd expect, it just smooths out the animation a bit, which might be what you're after. But I really like to use the spring mode. And if we play that, we don't quite get what we expect. It looks like we've got some weird delayed springiness happening here. And this is something you have to watch for. It's actually because we have the clamp enabled over here and that's clamping some of these springy values. But if we just switch that off and hit play, it should work the way it's supposed to. And that's pretty much the gist of this effect. Before we wrap things up though, I'll show you how to go about texturing this. Let's rewind this and we'll give it a render. And you can see a little deformation happening here. So that's all good so far. Let's come down here and double click to make a material. Then we'll double click on that to bring up the material editor. Under the color channel here, we'll change that color. Let's grab a gold sort of color, that'll do. Then we'll double click again down here to make another material, same deal. Let's make that blackish. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. So I want it to start with the yellow color. So let's drag that onto the sphere. So the whole sphere is now the golden color. So if we grab the black one, we also need to put that on the sphere, but now it's overwritten the gold one. So how do we limit the black to the deformation area? We actually need to incorporate the vertex map into our shader. So with our black shader selected, we'll go back to our material editor and we want to use the alpha channel this time. So we'll turn that on. And then up here under texture, we'll click this arrow and we want to use our vertex map as an alpha. And you can find that down here under effects and right near the bottom, there's the vertex map. And we'll click on that and it's asking us which vertex map we want to use. So we'll grab this guy and drag that in here. And then we can close this guy. Now if we hit play, it's looking pretty good. But if we do a render, this could probably do with a bit of smoothing. So with our sphere selected, we'll come up here and add a subdivision surface. Don't forget to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. That's looking better. Let's do a render. And that's pretty much it for this effect. Let's hit play and see what it looks like. We'll pause that. We could actually turn off the lines now. And there you go. You've got your decaying effect. And you can set this up so it's all interactive. If we grab our spherical field and just pull that out of here, we'll hit play again. And now wherever this touches, we'll get the effect from that point. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'm sure you'll have loads of fun with this effect. If you make something cool, don't forget to tag us on social media. As usual, you can download the project file below. And a big thanks to everyone who enrolled in our new course. People have been creating some really cool abstract artwork. Our 60% discount is on for another couple of days. The details are below. So check that out if you haven't already. And I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.